I thought we were finished with that topic. I'll go through door four with Lotus, Santa, and June. There's nothing to worry about. I just need to stay by her side. This should be fine. It's no problem this way. I should see the other four off. Looks like Ace and the others are going. Now then. Goodbye. Be careful. What are you doing? We need to hurry. Snake, your shoes! It's fine. Hurry! Or are you planning on dying with everyone else? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? Sorry, Snake! Let's go! Over there. Did you find anything? Uh, something's beeping. It's just like before. Probably the sound of the detonator on the bracelet. Do you think they're okay? Uh. Uh. Hey, there it is. That's gotta be that dead thing. Come on, get over here. The beeping. Phew! Looks like it stopped. Hey, guys! Are you doing alright over there? Yep, we're fine. Oh, hey! I'm gonna tell you about this whole dead thing, okay? The dead is just like the red, but the color is different. You know how the red was red? Well, the dead is blue. Other than that, it's just like the red. Authenticating is the same, too. <laughs> awesome! Thanks! Well... We should probably move on now. You be careful out there. Roger that. Whew. Now it's our turn. I'll go first. Okay, we ready? Yeah. Sure. Let's go. All right, let's go. Oh, it's counting down. We can't go back. We need to hurry and find. Hey! Uh, help! Don't! I are... don't. Oh no! Uh, we don't. We just. Oh! There it is. Hey! How many more seconds do we have? How would I know? Our time limit is 81 seconds. I know that. God, I'm asking you. Hurry! Come on, everyone! There's another door at the end. Let's try this one first. And of course it won't open. A keyhole. What's this mark? It 
male? No, not exactly. That's probably the symbol of Mars. Well, technically, they are the same symbol. But I saw a number of similar symbols near the main stairway. The symbols of the solar system. Oh, th that's right. The sun, Sat and... At least that's what I'm assuming. So this isn't the man symbol. It's a symbol for Mars? I think so. Yes. I see. Wait. Yeah, so, I looked the place over. Here's the deal. None of the other doors open. Then that must mean... We only have two more doors. Maybe it's the room number. The door on the left has a B92, and the one on the right says B93. All right, let's open them. I'll okay, I'll get B93 then. One. Hey, it opened. Yeah, it did. I, uh, I didn't expect that. It was so easy. Maybe this is all part of Zero's plan. Can't say I enjoy being treated like someone's puppet. Well, now we have these two rooms. I'm sure there's something in there that will help us get out of here. Let's find it. Santa and I will search this room. You two take the other one. All right. Okay. Oh yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? Yes, I'm fine. Let me see your forehead. Oh! Uh. <laughs> Guess it really has gone down. Are you <laughs> worried about me? Yeah, I, I guess I am. <laughs> By the way, Jumpy, hmm? how did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on D-deck. Damn straight. But is that really the truth? What? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? No, why would I? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Well, I, I don't know. Anything. I mean, you're hiding it. You mean, like, the number of men I've dated? <laughs> Do you want to know? <sighs> don't worry. Only 18. Yeah. <sighs> Time zero. Yeah, I guess I just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see. Anyway, I'm not hiding anything, just like you, Jumpy. When I woke up, I was on D-deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean, why did Zero pick us? We haven't- Hmm, I wonder. Look for what connects the victims. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? Yeah, I do. So? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must all have something to do with a classmate of ours. You got any ideas who it might- No, not- Oh. Well, if it had something to do with school- Or the janitor. Oh, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know.
This ship is bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about 900 feet long. Must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Huh. Even if it's just some sort of style choice, there's just too much. Do you remember what Zero said? Do you think maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good- I doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. Hmm, do you think this boat is... A replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. No way! Do you even know how much money that would take? No idea. But all they've got to do is break even, you know? Break even? Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the resurrected Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. Do you really think people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? It's the site of the worst accident in history. Uh, over 1,500 people died. A curse, huh? Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? Sorry, but I, I can't really say I believe in that kind of stuff. Uh, what about you? Nah, I, I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Yes, I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Titanic. What? A curse sank the Titanic. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess Amun-Ra, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Those who open the coffin will be forever cursed. So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right! <laughs> That's stupid. I don't... It's true! How can you be so sure? That mummy wasn't just a normal mummy. It was really mysterious. Totally unbelievable. What is so unbelievable about it? Well, supposedly, she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes. But she was a mummy. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She almost looked alive. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, it's that thing. I, uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, where your body turns into some kind of wax? The fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? And... Yes, saponification. But that's not what it was. Huh? That's not it. She wasn't wax. Then what was it? They say that she was frozen. What? That's right. The, you know how a human body is more than 60% water? Well, all of that water was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic, even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. That's crazy. I think so too. But... I didn't know? Yep. Maybe it's common sense to eat shaved ice in the desert because it lasts forever. Huh? Th nah, that seems too silly to be true. But maybe it isn't. It just appears that way because you didn't know it was true. What? Ice that doesn't melt, even in the desert? Does, does something like that really exist? No, even if it did, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? Hmm.
Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? Hmm? Here, take this. A bookmark? What is this for? Uh, do you want me to read a book? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured we might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? <laughs> you know what I hate most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, Love and luck. Hope, faith, love, and... Damn straight. And you hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but what does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Well, see... Eat, and that means it's like... Well, I guess... Leaf work. Hope, faith, the meaning... So, just t take the damn thing! Here! Alright, sure. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know? Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hope, faith, well... What? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. What, worried about the four horsemen? Nah, come on, man, that's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages that kind of crap scared people. This is the 21st century. I'm a little insulted. Then why do you hate four so much? Cause it's a half-assed number. Not the best or the worst. That's why. Y what? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass middle number. What are you... You play? Play? You mean like, gambling? Uh, yeah. Of course. Um... In Baccarat, the best possible hand totals nine. They call it Le Grand, but the lowest, most worthless cards, Zero's, they call Monkey. Just like the guy in charge of this game, huh? Zero's a monkey. What? <laughs> oh man, you're totally right. The guy who trapped us in here sure is one hell of a monkey. You know, if you think about it, the Nonary game is really a lot like Baccarat. And of course it doesn't use any of that stupid digital root junk. You just drop the tens digit, and that's it. Still, it does have the same idea of your final number needing to be a single digit. Oh. Yeah. I guess you got a point. And in both games, whoever has nine wins. The person who makes nine... wins? Wait, did you forget already? It is hit sequel. So, we have to... Don't... Of course. That's why... What? Huh? You know, no, it's derived while we're, you know, like two is binary, three, like tree, after that, and of course, it's called ice, so then, so, that'd be, and what are they, they go, and our, zero, and we need, I mean, and there, the number, he's got no one.
I've seen this picture before. Where? In a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. I saw this picture in his book. What's this interesting theory? Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Man, I can't deal with this. Just listening to you talk about it is giving me a headache. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shape of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. Uh, what part of that isn't difficult, exactly? All right, how about the theory of the telepathic mechanism? Telepathy? Yes, telepathy. Well, perhaps not exactly telepathy. <laughs> Who do you think we are? Kids from the 70s? I can't believe someone would actually do serious research on something like that. Yes, I agree. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understood it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it said. It was probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier from some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. There's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so... Um... Anyway, I saw a picture like that one in his book. Hey, what do you think this picture looks like? What do you mean? Isn't it just... It's just black and white scribbles. What about you, Junpei? Hmm, I, I guess it looks like... Uh, 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 a Funyarimpa. See? I, I mean... What the hell is a Funyarimpa? What, what, what do you mean? How the hell would I know? How could you not know? That's... Whew, that's practically blasphemous. Oh! Oh, say you're sorry! Apologize to the Funyarimpa! Goodness! You are such a rude woman. Junpei, are you just screwing around? <laughs> Forget it. I'm... This is a dog. See? Like this. So, now we know what it's a picture of, but I, I don't see how that helps us. A, a TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify, initially. But once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. These two pictures. The first was a woman wearing a hat. The other one... Let's just say it was this picture of a dog. So, their experiment. First, they sent the picture to other parts, to Ireland. Then, they were, the results, 9.3.9. Then, during the, the audio, af, after another, this time, they were, the result, 10%, the pre, the dog, the percentage of people, it went from 3. Point, so, do you understand? Do you, there was no way this, they live, but even, why? Oh, a f so, then that, hmm. Huh. So, well, I mean, the things I just told you about are true. But the results of that experiment really aren't anything to go by. In the end, I'm sure they were just in it for the ratings. Right! I, uh... <laughs> like I... Uh, oh. All right. We've got the... Word. Huh. A field not visible to the naked eye. Morphogenetic field. Oh, another hallway. Come on. It's not going to open because you rattled it, you know. Damn it. Look over here. Elevators. And the buttons? Of course they don't work. The power must be out here, too. That leaves this door. Well, looks like we don't have any choice. Yeah. Sure does. Well, then. Let's All right. Oh. So it's a kitchen. What were you expecting? Isn't it obvious? The exit! <laughs> you really think it'd be that easy? Yeah, yeah, I know. Still. 
If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. Hmm. <sighs> no good. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Hey! What's that? Huh? Oh yeah, uh, I guess I forgot to tell you. I found this a little while ago. It's a map of the bee deck. Let me see that. I knew it. See? Yes, yes. What did you- This is him. See? We came in- How about that? There we go. Thanks. There's a card reader. And that means the key- That seems- All right, let's get moving. Okay. I don't think we'll be able to. It's futile. Futile? You know. Uh, oh. oh, um, uh. Oh, no reason. I was just thinking about. Huh? Why were you thinking about futility? Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. The Titanic? Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? Oh, yeah. There was a novel that had a bunch of stuff in it that described the sinking of the Titanic before it actually sank. Yeah, that's the one. The title of the novel is Futility. It was written 14 years before the Titanic sank, but... I know, I know. I mean, I didn't know the name of the book, but the story was the same, right? Yeah. Well, I heard it was all a hoax. A hoax? I heard that the stuff that matched up to the Titanic so well was actually added after it sank. Apparently, the only thing that was the same originally was that a boat ran into an iceberg and sank. But... The novel was published in 1898. Like I said, that was the first print of the book. Fourteen years later, the author heard about what happened to the Titanic. He figured that was his chance, you know? He just went back and changed some stuff in his novel, so that it matched the Titanic exactly. Really? There's no such thing as premonitions or- But, but, that wasn't the only book that predicted the Titanic sinking. It, it wasn't? Yep, there were two others, both of them before the accident. One in 1886, and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died. Hmm. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day. Right. I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But what if Stead had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? The automatic writing? Are you talking? Yes. What do you mean, yes? That's... Okay, let's say these guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? A 
That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. Oh, hmm. What are you smoking? William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Um, well, uh, well, uh, why, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? Come on, let's... Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. Oh, whoa. Hey, you had a fever. No, my fever. But... Huh? <sighs> no! Why did it suddenly close? Ah! The knob's frozen! But why? It looks like the pipe next to it broke, and... Hey! Lotus! You're out there, right? Open the door! What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open! Try opening it from that side! Please! Oh, fine. If you say so. It's no use. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. <laughs> oh. God damn it. I... Right. Dry ice? Yeah. It, I wonder how warm it has to get for it to, to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I am the clean... <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. <laughs> oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Yes, that's fight. You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? Come on, guys. I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Uh, it is kind of weird. <sighs> but it can turn into a liquid. Oh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure... It won't turn into a liquid, right? Oh. 
See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 30... So why isn't that... There's a kind of ice that does... Hmm? Huh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Originally, Ice-9 was a made-up substance, in, uh, but re- Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice-9, or is it water? Like I said, so you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this Ice-9 are like that? Yep. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it. They did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new, crystallized form of glycerin and asked for seeds. Oh, a seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like, how do I put it? It was almost like all commute and now. What does that have to do with Ice-9? What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice-9. A lot like? If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees, man, it'd be the end of the world. At any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. All right, guys, I think that's enough of that. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but I might go. So let's get... Selfish. Ice night. Put water into the bottle with dry ice and make sure the lid's closed. Now I just. All right. So, uh, I just need to give it a little uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock. All right. Ah, some tr All right, guys. Where exactly? There isn't. Yeah, there is. Look, right here. Come on, get in. All right. Three. Four, five. You're counting the wrong way. Oh, that is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. All right. Yes. Just all right. Three, two, one. Jumpy, the ice on the door. Is it gone? Yeah, it's the blast. Yes. Hooray! Move. Oh, God damn! Well, you did just grab the grill. What did you think would happen? Hey, where's Lotus? Oh, uh, welcome back. What? What do you mean, what was I doing? We were gonna die! Oh, yeah? But you didn't. <laughs> didn't. Oh, don't! Uh, I, if you... Mm. I did all... I even... But I couldn't sell? I mean... Fine, but there's one... What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? Wait, what? You think I closed the door on you? 
Why would I do something like that? It, I told you before, if you die, then I die too. Yeah, I guess so. If she really wanted to kill us, all she had to do was bar the door from the outside. But she didn't. Well, she didn't do anything. She's only lazy, or negligent at least. Well, um... Hmm? Oh, yes, well that's alright. Hey, no more straight time, especially- How? Yeah, yeah. I think we've been here before. 